Okay, this lesson is for section 2.3 in our textbook, Inequalities. We're going to be solving compound inequalities as well as some absolute value inequalities. Um, so let's begin with this first compound inequality. Um, we could, if we wanted to, separate each one and solve this inequality as well as this inequality. But there is a more efficient way to do this question. Um, if we treat this as one large inequality, we can solve this all at, at one, one time. So what I'm going to do to solve this is multiply by 4 throughout, just to get that 4 out of the denominator and turn this into a pretty easy um, inequality. So I get negative 3 is less than 2 times 2 minus x is less than 3. And I can distribute here. And now I'm going to just subtract 4 on both, side, on both sides of the inequality. So I'm left with this and once I divide by negative uh, switch everything so because I'm dividing by negative sign here I now have seven halves is uh, greater than X which is greater than positive one half and now I actually want to flip everything so that I have the lowest amount and my range here represents the lowest number to the highest number so this would be on the uh, open interval one half to seven halves if I were to express this in interval notation Okay, now in this next section here, we're going to discuss a little bit about absolute value inequalities. So we're going to use the definition of absolute value here, or the algebraic definition to help us do this. Now, um, I also have the mnemonic here. Whenever you see a less than symbol, this is an and inequality. When you see a greater, greater symbol, this is an or inequality. So there are two cases here. Either the inside here is positive, so x is less than 1, or the opposite of x is less than 1. So you actually have two separate distinct inequalities here. Um, and if I solve for x here, I get x is greater than negative 1. So this is actually an and. So this would be the solution here to this um, absolute value inequality. Now for the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 1, this is a greater question. So this is an or question. So I still get two cases. Either x is greater than or equal to 1, or the at opposite of x is um, greater than or equal to 1 and solving for x here I get x is less than negative 1. So that's basically our definition that is going to come into play here when we're solving um, these inequalities. So like for example in number 3, um, or sorry 2 back here, um, I'm going to set up two cases. So this is a less than problem, so this is an and, okay, and we're going to set up x minus 5 is less than or equal to 2 and the alternate equation here, the opposite of x minus 5 is less than or equal to 2. So here I solve, I get x is less than or equal to 7, and here, once I distribute, um, I can set, subtract 5 and then flip the sign, so I end up with x is greater than or equal to 3. So I have the closed interval here. If I were to actually graph this, so let me graph it first. So it's from 3 to 7, closed circles here. It's on the closed interval, 3 to 7, in interval notation. Okay, in problem number 3, this is a greater than problem, so this is going to be an or. <clears throat> I'm going to set up my two cases, so this could either be positive and we leave it alone, or it's the inside is negative and we take the opposite. So when I solve here, I subtract 2 multiply by negative 3, flip the sign, and I get x is less than negative 9. Now here's a first step. You could divide out that negative sign here, so I'm going to do that instead. This time of distributing, I'm just going to divide that out right away. So I flip the sign here, and I have less than negative 5 now. So I'm going to subtract the 2, and then multiply by negative 3 here as well, flip the sign again, and I get x is greater than 21. So um, on a graph, Let's use interval notation this time. I'm going to have um, an open bracket here. And since this is an or, it should be shaded um, x is less than negative 9, right? And x is greater than 21. So on an interval, we would write this as negative infinity to 9, open bracket, union with, uh, let's see, 21 to positive infinity. Okay, now in problem number four, let's go ahead. You can pause the video, try this problem out, and then replay the solution. 
Okay, in problem number four, I'm going to start by setting up my two cases, x plus 2 over 4 minus x minus 3 over 3 is less than 1, so if it's positive, I do nothing, I just set it up normally. If it's negative, then I take the opposite of x plus 2 over 4 minus x minus 3 over 3 is less than 1, and I'm going to solve each one. Okay, so in this first example here, um, in this this part here, this is in uh, less than, so this is going to be an and inequality, but in this first one, I'm going to multiply it by 12, just so I can get rid of the uh, the denominator here. You could, if you wanted to, you can just find a common denominator, it doesn't make a difference here, um, but I'm going to multiply by 12 throughout, so I have uh, 3 times x plus 2 minus 4 times x minus 4, or x minus 3, is less than 4, 12, 12, my bad. Okay. So now I have just a pretty simple inequality to solve here, and I end up with negative x, uh, giving that over the other side, is less than negative 6, so x is greater than 6. Solving on the other side, if you want to divide that out right away, and end up with this inequality, you can go ahead and do that. Since we already know if we multiply this uh, by 12, we already know that we should get this work here. Like the only thing that changes is that from, from this side over here is that now I have greater than negative 12. And if I move over everything, I still have negative x is greater than negative 24 minus 6, negative 30. So x is less than 30. So we have an in interval notation here. Open interval from 6 to 30. Alright, now problem number 5. This is another thinking question. It's really similar to the one that we did yesterday um, in part 2 of other equations. Um, so it says the absolute value of something is less than or equal to 0 here. So you've got to think about this in, in terms of whether or not this is possible. So if this is less than 0, then this inequality is impossible. We can't have the absolute value of anything being less than zero, right, because the absolute value um, changes to positive. If it's positive, it keeps it. If it's not, then it makes it positive. So this is impossible unless x squared plus 6x plus 5 were to equal zero. Okay, this is the only case in which this is possible, so we're going to solve this equa e in quadratic equation. We have x plus 5 and x plus 1 equaling zero. In other words, if x equals negative 5, or x equals negative 1, these are the only two solutions that would satisfy this absolute value inequality. Okay, so that's the end of lesson section 2.3 on inequalities.